Yo, what's up guys, Cezo here. So in this video, I'll be showing you guys how to edit the Valorant highlights video, kind of like Flights or Ethos or any of the bigger content creators in the Valorant space. They all have a very similar editing style. It's very simple, but very effective and looks very nice. So without further ado, let's get right into the tutorial. So starting off, I'll show you guys how to actually make like a highlight video, something similar like Flights and all the other content creators in Valorant. So it consists of three things. So number one is cutting the videos to perfect length and syncing them with the, uh, with the music. Second would be the transition and effects. And third would be the motion blur. So once again, start a new project and drag in your first clip. Click change again so it uh, applies the frame rate. Now on the top, you can see these uh, little options here. Go on playback. Render cache it smart. So it pre-renders all the transitions so it's smooth throughout the whole playback. Now obviously you also want to drag in the music of your choice. So my song in this tutorial will be uh, Fits and Tantrums Out of My League. Okay, so we got that now. The way I will do it is have your best clips in the beginning of the song, like at the first beat drop. They have the first main drop out here. Here, and I have another good clip uh, at the end here. Because those are like the, the most important parts of the song, pretty much. Now, sadly, before this video even came uh, up as an idea, I deleted all my Valorant clips because I didn't really have any use for them. But now that I'm making this video, I wish I had them, but it's fine. I wanted to a custom game with someone and recorded some, some random clips. Obviously, nothing crazy, just some random scripted clips. But it's just for the sake of the tutorial, so I can actually show you guys how to do this. Okay, so what you want to do is uh, get the first clip and now find this spot in the song where you want to sync it with. So, uh, so it will be uh, where he starts singing in my case. And uh, boom, this is where you want to sync the first clip. You see this little waveform here? You can turn it up so you can see it a bit better. This waveform here, this is where the bum comes in. So go to the bum with your cursor. Up until like this point where you can see the kill feed like this. When it pops up straight away, pretty much when you get the kill, you want to stretch it back out. And this is the beginning. Okay, so let's see the sync. Okay, that looks fine. Another thing you could add is fade in at the beginning and at, uh, at the beginning of the clip and at the beginning of the song, like this. And then go to where you want to transition into the next clip. So I'll do like at the 40 nights, like right here. Cut it out. See where he says like 40. There we go. And then we want to drag in the next clip. I only have a couple of clips I recorded because I don't want to obviously make a whole montage out of it because it will take too long. I'll just show you how I do it with a couple of clips and uh, you can repeat it throughout the whole thing. Next part where I would actually sing the kill with the music would be here. But it's like boom, boom, boom. Like the two claps and then boom. Boom. See right there is the boom. So I'll go back. Uh, just uh, shorten the clip real quick and then move it up until you can see the kill feed and then stretch it back out there we go good sync then i'll transition it again to the next clip uh, where it says like girl right there it's a girl there we go it's a very distinguishable part of the song like these parts where i'm transitioning into the next clip it's pretty quiet, and then it's like 40, uh, 40, nah. so like it's, uh, you know, you can just tell it's a good part of the song to transition to the next clip. And that's pretty much it guys, you just repeat the process over and over again until you have uh, your whole like montage filled up. And one thing I forgot to mention is you want to save as much as possible in between. Just so you don't lose any progress because the DaVinci Resolve likes to crash a lot. So let's just name it Tutorial 2. So now we pretty much have like the main like, uh, you know, cutting it down and like uh, syncing it up part done. Let's just watch it back real quick. Okay, that looks pretty good so far. There are like some uh, missed timings, but it's fine. So just like go through it again and uh, adjust it a little bit. Make sure it's perfect. So here I'll put it back again. Okay. 
That looks better already. So that's pretty much it for step one. Now we're gonna be moving on to the transitions and effects. So like a very common one is like this blur one. So I'll just add it real quick. You can see this red line here. That means it's not pre-rendered yet. So you just wanna watch through it, it'll pre-render it, and it's smooth. Obviously you don't want it that long, so we're just gonna drag it down, maybe a bit more. And I would also change the ease into ease in and out, like this. Make it a bit longer now, because we'll change the settings a little bit. Okay, that looks good. Okay, next transition. Pretty clear one was this non-additive dissolve transition. The best time to use that one though is like when you have a deagle at the end of a clip, so right here, and also a deagle at the beginning of the next clip, like right here. But I'll still use it just to show you guys how it looks like. So drag it on, shorten it, ease in and out once again. That's way too uh, fast, so let's just drag it out. Okay, that's fine. So one I really like to use is push, so scroll down and find it, drag it in between the two clips. Now it looks pretty meh right now. But what you want to do is up the motion blur to like 0 0.3 at least, and then have the ease to ease in and out once again. And that's what it looks like. I think that looks very nice. Now we just try this additive dissolve. That one looks pretty nice as well actually. Do ease in and out once again. Okay, last one, we're just going to use uh, non-additive again. And now this is a good example for the non-additive uh, transition. Right here I have a knife, and at the beginning of this clip I also have a knife, so this is what it looks like. It's pretty much like you like teleport, I think it looks very nice. You can also do ease in and out. Here I'll just keep it on non though. That looks very good though. Okay, so that's, that's it for the transitions, but we also have some effects to uh, add on. What you see a lot in these Valorant highlights videos is like white flashes uh, whenever you get a kill at big moments of the video. So like it would be around here. Like this like where the beat drops and this where you actually use this as well. Or when you get like an ace and you use like the last couple of kills. So to do this effect you want to go into your toolbox. Go on the search icon and type in solid color. It will show up right here as a generator. Drag it up above everything here. And then resize it. I'll do it like this. You can always change the length. Now you want to click on it. Change the color to white. Then go on settings. Scroll down until you see composite mode. And then do overlay. And you can change the opacity. Uh, I'll do it like 70-ish. Between like 60 and like 80 is fine. So that's what it looks like. Now you want to fade it out. And fade it in a tiny bit, like this. And then you obviously want to sync it with the kill, so it would be like... Right here. That would be the perfect timing. See, when I get the kill, it like flashes white. I'll actually uh, make it a bit brighter, so turn up the opacity. You can make it longer as well, like this. I think that looks very good, actually. Look at that transition as well. I'll do it here as well, because also like during the main beat drop. I'm gonna actually make this a bit brighter as well. So that looks pretty good so far. And now one thing I also want to show you guys is how to do like the slow-mo effect after you get the kill. So like here it should be normal, but when you kill her, it should be like very slow, so she falls down to the ground slowly. So how to do that is you click on the clip, then you right click on it. And then retime curve. Go a bit to the left so you can actually see this uh, little window right here. Click on retime frame. Then tick retime speed and untick retime frame. We go back to where like the kill is. So like right here is fine. Scroll down. Then you click on this red line. Click on this marker here. And uh, what you want to do is drag down the part after the kill. We'll make it like 58% something like that. See it doesn't look that smooth though. So we're going to fix that up real quick. What you want to do now is go on the right side here. Go to retime and scaling, click on it, then retime process optical flow, and resize filter is smoother. Oops, there we go. And let it render, see it's still red here. So I'm just gonna let it play through. Okay, there we go, now it should be fine. Okay, now let's see what it looks like with the slow motion. 
Now, the more you slow it down, the more it will be like a uh, choppy or whatever you see. I want to do it now. I'll do like 30%. This is where it starts getting bad. I'll just render it. And look at the screen. It like it wobbles weirdly. So I would just recommend keeping it decently high, like at least 50% or a bit higher. You are just here. Cut it out. There we go. And I think that looks very good. So let me pre-render everything real quick and show you what it looks like so far after it's rendered. Alright, so let's watch you with all the new transitions and effects added. So that's pretty much how it looks like with all the effects and transitions. Now we can move over to like the recolor and stuff. So uh, first I recommend opening your control panel or whatever and turning down the digital vibrance so it doesn't like mess up with anything because it adds up and makes it look different than it actually is. So turn it down to the normal percentage which is 50 on the video. Next thing you want to do is go in toolbox again. At this time type an adjustment clip and drag it above everything. And stretch it out so it covers the whole video like this. Do you want to click on it? Then look for a good like a uh, frame of the video where you can see the colors change. Like where you can actually not see the change of the colors. So this is pretty good actually. You can see the darks and the brights. Then click on the adjustment clip, go on color. And then you'll see the screen right here. Now the settings that I'll be mainly using are these down here and up here as well. So first thing you want to do is up the saturation to like at least like 75. Up the color boost a little bit. Don't up it too much because that does way more than the saturation. So I will do like maybe five just to be safe with it. You can lift the shadows a little bit and you can make the highlights poke out more. You can sharpen it up a tiny bit. I will do like two. Change the temperature to make it a bit colder, a bit warmer, depending on what you want. I'll make it a bit colder actually. You could actually try and up the highlights a bit more and see what it looks like. So now let's watch again and see what the recolor did. You can already tell it looks way more lively and uh, enjoyable to watch. Now obviously mess, uh, mess with the settings as much as you want until you actually get the perfect settings. I'll just leave it like this because I think it looks fine. One thing I want to do is watch the last two clips though with the settings. So let's see. So the last thing you have left to do is actually add the motion blur. So go to the first clip, click on fusion. Once you're in fusion, press shift and space. First type in optical to get optical flow. Then do shift and space again. Type in vector and we'll do the vector motion blur. It should look like this. I can change the scale of the motion blur down to like 0.15 would be a good one. Once you apply to the first clip, it should apply to the other clips automatically. So now you want to press save again. And when you try to actually like watch it back, you'll see that it's laggy. That's because um, whenever you use fusion and add effects like motion blur, for example, just makes the whole program very laggy. Now, once you're done with everything, you want to export the video. So uh, the format would be MP4. Uh, the resolution you want to do custom and then do 2560 by 1440, which is 1440p. Uh, this is very important so the quality of the video is actually good because if you only have 1080p on uh, YouTube then it makes it look pretty bad. Frame rate obviously 60, quality set to best. Then once you're done you want to add it to render queue and then render it here on the right. Now this might take a while because of the settings and all the fusion effects but it's definitely worth the wait. Yeah. 